So now the advanced empty hand where it says knife, you're dealing with ice pick grip, truss, and how to grip slashes. Um, so, what I'm showing you today is going to be our disarms. The disarms are purchased with hits. So when he comes in with an attack, I might do a parry, a primary parry from uh, our advanced at the end versus knife, get an eye jab or an elbow or ear slap, whatever, get a push to gain distance if I can. If I can't, he comes back with something. I might go with a, I might go with a blade reversal or a lock of some type or a break of some type. All right? But you can't do that, or it's difficult to do that on the fly. You have to get some kind of disabling hit first, usually, unless your locks are really perfect. You have to remember, people in the street don't come at you really committed with a knife, like in the movies. They have to come at you going, ah, ah, you know, or, ah, you know, a lot of these things, you know, people in the old days, maybe, especially if you're a samurai and you've both got wooden armor on and you've got a little tonto and you've got to get, penetrate that armor, maybe you will go with this full, long thrust. People in the street in America today are not going to attack you like that. You know, they're going to pull the knife and pump you in the heart. Or if they are slashes, it's going to be tight slashes. It's going to fake high, cut low. It's not big committed motions. You know, not big gross motions like you had a sword. So you can't, like you make a big heavy one like this, I can't make a big committed motion over here, because that's just a fake and he's going to gut me. All right, so you, you can't deal with those committed motions. What you're learning in knife tapping is how to deal with a non-committed attack. Dealing with a guy who might be throwing fakes, like a rhythm like boxing attacks, as opposed to a guy attacking you like this, or attacking you like that. You know, people don't attack you like that in America today. All right, so you, you, the, a lot of the classical systems are based on classical attacks. You know, this is really not an empty hand attack, it's supposed to be substitute for a samurai story. You know, people are not gonna make those big committed attacks empty hand or a small light weapon like a knife. You know, at least not in America today. Um, so the reason we start uh, on knife tapping is it gives you your escape route. My intent is, if he comes up with a knife, is, is say, um, let's say that common street attack is just right in the heart. My intent is to parry this out and take his head off, right, with a slap. Push him out of the way and get something in my hand. Right? But what happens if, if I guide myself out of the way and I go to get a hit, but he counter cuts and tries to gut me? I need a piece of knife tapping in order to get a hit, right? To get a little time to get enough to get into a lock, right? Or a blade reversal, whatever. So if my intent is, you know, when he starts to pull the knife out, I jab, you know, break his shoulder, hit in the back of the head, move behind him. But that's my intent in the fight. But as he's pulling the knife out, he parries the eye jab. Then I need to go to knife tapping. So we're gonna, what you're going to see in actual intended use is what we call a tertiary parry with a third hand hit. What you're learning in, and that's, if I could digress a bit, what I mean by tertiary. When you attack, your primary parry is the thing that's going to get you out of the way the best. You can hit from this. I can slap him, I can hack him, I can do eye attacks. But mainly I'm getting my body out of the line of attack and I'm parrying. This teaches you the best footwork. It forces you to get out of the way, as opposed to you know trying to block it. Or even a tertiary. Tertiary taps are good, but they're very precise in their timing, in their distancing, and their accuracy. In order to hit the hand here as a moving target with my palm requires a lot more accuracy than using my whole blade of my arm here. You see the difference? All right. So my intent on the higher levels is yes, I want to use a tertiary, but if I miss that, I have to go into my primary parry. You see, to buy myself time to get you know my, a weapon in my hand. Empty hand versus knife really shouldn't remain empty hand versus knife very long. It should be it should very quickly become knife versus pistol, knife versus knife, knife versus flashlight, knife versus walking stick, whatever you have, you know, in your hand, get something in your hand. You don't want to do empty hand versus knife, you really don't. You know, knife versus big pen is better than empty hand. Get something in your hand, okay? Then it becomes, I'm gonna take this pen, I'm gonna put it through your eye, into your brain, you know? That's a different fight than 
empty handed, he's got enough. You see the idea? Okay. So everyone already has the knife tapping, right? Okay, so we'll go to the uh, blade reversal, disarms. And I'm going to throw in there some third hand hits. And the reason I call it third hand is in the equation, his attacking hand, my parrying hand, that third hand in the equation is a hitting hand. He also has a hitting hand. Okay? So you are in this process going to learn him attacking with both hands, the knife hand and his third hand. You have a third hand attack, he's got a free hand too. It's not, it's not always, there's no rule to say he can only attack with the knife hand. There are kicks involved in here. So, you know, I, I have a problem with some people going through the process of they take, you know, one or two seminars and they see this at the A or B level and they say, oh, all they do is knife tap all day. No, that's not the case. Or there's no hitting with the other, the other guy can't punch with the other hand. No, yes, there is. Just, but there's a progression to the training. If you dump everyone in the deep end of the pool at the same time, you know, the first day of class, which is eventually where you need to learn to swim, but if you do it the first day of class, a lot of people are sick. You know, you need that progression to so not sitting there just treading water badly and drowning. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Okay, so there has to be that progression. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to go, everyone, since everyone has knife tapping, the primary, secondary, tertiary parries, right? Uh, Sydney, I don't think Sydney has everything. Okay, He's got we'll do a little review, real quick review, uh, and then we'll go to the blade reversals. And what I'm going to do is try to take this more as an actual chain of events where a guy attacks you. He's going to do a, a tertiary parry with some type of attack, then come in, get a hit, and then I'll show you a blade reversal. So I'll give you some sample hits in each, uh, each blade reversal or each disarm. And again, if you're, if say I'm trying to do a disarm, but he counters me, it comes out, then I'll need a piece of knife tapping in order to get back to my hits. Do you see the idea? Yes, sir. So that I call knife tapping the mortar between the bricks. And you can't build a, a brick, a wall just out of mortar, but it's not as strong just one out of bricks either. It's nice to have the bricks, you know, uh, connected by mortar. Okay? Okay. So, uh, let's stand up and get to work. Go.